Hey everybody, General Motors Jeff here. In today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the many things that your salesperson didn't show you when you picked up your Chevy Silverado. Keep in mind, a lot of these features will be pertaining to the GMC Sierra as well, but let's go. So in fairness, a little bit of a disclaimer here. I know that some of you may already know some of these things. Some of your salespeople may have shown you, but you may learn something today. And some of you may learn a lot today, actually. Um, so we're going to go over some of the cool features that you get and you can activate and you can use inside your Chevy Silverado GMC Sierra from 2019 up to now. And I know some of these things will pertain to trucks older. That's not what we're talking about today. But I would like to know a couple things. Number one, if you've learned anything from this, I would love to know what it is you learned that you, maybe you've already been driving the truck for six months or a year. You didn't even know that you could do this with the truck. That's the one thing. The second thing I would love to hear is if I missed something. I mean, I'm, I'm using right now, this by the way, is a 2021 Chevrolet Silverado RST rally package. So what I will tell you firsthand is things, some things I love to show you, but because of inventory, I don't have a Denali or a High Country or any of those trucks to show you some other features. But I wanna show you on a mid-level mid truck um, some of these features. So I would love to know if I've missed something that you think might be on this level of truck. I would love to comment below because obviously my followers, my subscribers out there that are watching this, they might learn something that I forgot to mention. So without further ado, let's get going. All right, so first things first, we're heading out back to talk about something I've talked about in other videos before, but you may have not have seen. And it's such a surprising thing to me that more dealers, A, haven't explained this or have actually explained this wrong. And it's to do with back here. Now, of course, we know that that is a rear view camera, right? Obviously, it's for the back of camera. Well, a lot of dealers have been telling customers that this is the trailer hitch camera that, that you know, focuses in right down on there. That is incorrect. This is actually a spotlight, which, by the way, can be controlled from up here. And I'm going to show you that right now. So if you see this, see that right there, right there, that jellyfish launcher? If you press that button, it lights up up there. It lights up your lights in the back and it lights up. Oh, can you see that right there? And it's an amazing light because it shines, boom, right down on there on your hitch. So that's one tip for you. So much like a smartphone, you can see how the screen here works very similarly. Now, like a smartphone, let's say you want to change where the icons are. Let's say you don't use some, you don't use users or you use trailer and you want it on the first page. All you do is you hold on to it just like you do on your iPhone move it over and you can put it onto that screen. Check that out. You can actually move the icons around. Again, you might be an Apple user, so you're not gonna use Android Auto. You can put that to the second screen and you could bring the camera app over. Again, all you have to do is hold it and you can move it across. All right, so did you know that this talk button does a couple things? First and foremost, if you press it once, obviously. Yes. You can say call so-and-so. That okay. is using, sorry, that is using the voice commands of the vehicle. Now, if you're connected through Apple CarPlay or of course Android Auto, and right now I'm connected through Apple CarPlay, if you hold this button down for a couple seconds, you can actually ask Siri or, you know, for the Android Auto, uh, Google questions. So here's a prime example. Hold this down for a couple seconds. Siri, when do the Toronto Blue Jays play next? The Blue Jays meet the Angels at 9.38 p.m. Isn't that cool? And check this out. If I hold it down again. Siri, take me to the closest McDonald's. The nearest one I found is McDonald's on Great Northern Road. And How let me know if I should call cool one of them or get is directions that? You could be driving along, coming into work and do this. Siri, what's the weather going to be like today? It's currently clear in 25 degrees. Expect partly cloudy skies and rain starting tonight. Temperatures are heading down from 25 degrees to 18 tonight. Did any of you know that you could do that? Check this out. Watch me do this. There's a quick way to get this cooled off before you get in it, right? So you can road start the vehicle. If you hit the unlock button and hold it, that will roll the windows down. And I'll show you inside how to turn that on because from the factory as a default, it's turned off. We're gonna go into settings. We're gonna go into vehicle and the same thing we did before remote. Oops, don't want teen driver. We're gonna go to remote lock, unlock and start. Scroll down and you're going to see remote window operation. Of course, I just turned it on, but when you get it from the factory, you're gonna find it's like that, okay? So let's turn both of those on because I'm sure the person that buys this vehicle will actually like those features. All right, so here's a good one for you. I know some of you may live in a more remote area 
And I've had this question asked before. This screen is too bright, even when, by the way, you can dim the screen here. I don't want this screen on when I'm driving on the highway. It's distracting. Did you know you can actually turn this screen off? And I'm gonna quickly show you how to do that. If you go to settings, you go to display, check this out, display off. Boom, you can actually turn it off. And to get it back on, you just tap it and you're back on again, you're ready to rock and roll. All right, this time we're gonna talk about the radio itself. And I cannot believe the amount of people who have not been told that you can actually pause and fast forward and rewind live radio. So if you got in the vehicle, you went in the corner store, you left the vehicle running, come back out, you can rewind back to that favorite song. Make sure you press these buttons, the fast forward and rewind. The other ones are, the, are obviously the channel buttons. And again, you can just pause and rewind. I love that feature and I cannot believe the amount of people who have not been shown that. Let's talk about the info page. And obviously there's a lot of information on here. You have your trip meters, fuel range, oil life. If you didn't know this, by the way, you have air filter life on this. You have brake pad life, which is really cool. But let's say you don't want all of these or you want a couple other items on this. All you have to do is go over to the settings on here and you can actually, look at this, select and deselect what is on that information page. So you can look at, you can have timer on there, engine hours, uh, transmission fluid, trailer brake, off-road, another blank page and, and even this one we didn't have the speedometer on it so you can change select and deselect the things you have on the info page right in front of you not only that but you can change the home page so we're on the home page now not this this is the information page you can change the things you have on there so right now if we want to change those options okay let's say we want the speedometer we want the fuel range yeah but we also want the time up there you just select that scroll back over and guess what in a matter of seconds you'll see in the top right hand corner there it is the time is up there as well. So you can change the items on the home screen also. All right, so you know one of the things I hear people complain about sometimes, it's when you double lock this, right? And you all know what I'm gonna talk about. When you double lock it, it uh, the lights flash and the horn honks, right? Let's, let's check this out. Oh, did you hear that? No, you didn't, that's right. Did you see that? No, you didn't, that's right. That is because inside on the settings, and I'll show you here in a second, you can actually change it so that it'll either do none of that it does both, like it comes from the factory where it honks the horn and flashes the lights. Or you can have it just flash the light, or you can just have it honk the horn, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right, so once again, settings, vehicle, remote lock, unlock, and start. And right here, remote lock feedback. Check this out, when I press that, look at it, I have that off. You can have it lights and horn, lights only or horn only. Like myself, some of you may have little ones in the car. If you go to settings, you go to apps, and you go to audio, if you go right here, check this out, explicit content filter. You can actually hit this and it won't allow those bad songs to play through. All right, so when equipped, some of you may have the power outlet back here in the box, right? Many of, many people I've heard call the dealership and say, listen, I'm plugging this in here and it's not working. I know this sounds simple to many of you. However, if not shown, some, some of you just do not know and that's understandable. There is a button. Can you see it right there? That has to be on and green in order for the power to be going back there. If the vehicle is off the keys out of it, that will not work. Power will not be going back there. So you got your cooler, cooler plugged in there on a trip. It's working great. But if you park it, stop and go to a restaurant for a while, it's not plugged. It's not even though it's plugged in, it's not working at that time. Do you know how many customers have not been explained one of the most simple things, which is how the power seat works? I know this is sounds silly again, but again, I think many of you have figured out that this is the power lumbar, right? So that inflates and deflates the small of your back. Obviously, this moves the seat back and forth. Don't get bored here, I got, I'm going somewhere with this. The interesting thing about this button right here, it does three functions that a lot of people don't understand. A lot of dealers will say, well, yeah, this lifts the seat up. Okay, it does, but it does two different things. In fact, three different things. Of course, this will move the seat forward and back. But the back part of this will lift up the whole seat base. Can you see that? It's lifting up the whole seat base for the height. The front part of this, which many of you do not know or have not used, actually adjusts the cushion behind your knee. So especially on a long trip, that can change the angle of your knee and make it more comfortable for you, or at least just change the angle to you know give you a little bit of um, change up on terms of how your legs are. You know, one of the cool things I like about this electric parking button is you can put it on, and when it's engaged, if you start to actually give it gas and drive away, it'll kick itself off, all right? So the cool part about that is use it as often as you like, I know a lot of you don't use your parking brake because you're, forget, you know, the, the old ones which you step on because you're scared to leave it on, you drive away, and it's a while after you recognize it's on. This will kick it off as long as the gas is on and it knows you're trying to drive the vehicle. Did you know that in many of our trucks, we have the ability to link this up to your garage door opener? 
Yes, instead of having that thing hanging off here, you can actually set this up with many garage door openers. Obviously, just look at your um, owner's manual and you can link your garage door opener right there. All right, let's talk about when you remote start the vehicle and your heated seats. Did you know that this vehicle has a thermostat? So we can determine if it's cold enough, these heated seats will come on and preheat. Some of you may not like that. Some of you might not like heated seats. I don't know. Or it might not be turned on in your vehicle. I want to show you quickly. You go to settings here and you go to remote lock. And, well, first of all, up to here to vehicle. Remote lock, unlock and start. Right down here. See that? You can turn that feature off. So when you remote start the vehicle, those heated seats won't come on. But again, if it's 30 degrees out, uh, by the way, Celsius, sorry, or if it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit out, pardon me, and you remote start the vehicle, the, even though this is on, those heated seats aren't going to come on. They're only going to come on when it drops below, you know, a remotely feasible temperature where it's cold enough that you're going to need the heated seats on. And again, the, by the way, the heated seats only preheat. Once you get in the vehicle, you actually have to turn it on to whatever setting you want that on, how hot you want it. They will not get crazy hot. So you can let the vehicle run for 15 minutes, which the remote start does, and it's not going to make the, the make the seats so hot you can't sit on them. That also works with the heated steering wheel. The heated steering wheel will preheat as well. All right, there's many more features. I'm probably going to do another video talking about some more things, but I hope you learned something today. If you did, like I say, comment below. Um, if there's something you'd like for me to go over next time or something you're not sure of, I'd like to hear that too. And maybe when I do my next video, I will talk about that. As always, thanks so much for watching. Take care, everybody. Cheers.